Lu Baolin, dressed in plain clothes and draped in hair, was sent to the cold palace. Chi Kainu wants to tie hair with the emperor. Cold palace placement. Qin Xianche dances to the city. Being beaten into a cold palace by the emperor. Zheng Xiaoxi sang a high song. Being beaten into a cold palace by the emperor. Watching the F4S in the cold palace, Yu Wangshu activated the aura of life, using one move to save the bleeding Empress Rong and another move to save the infected princess. Sheng Sheng mixed up and became a professional therapist in the harem. Keywords of the novel This palace is actually a therapist. No pop-ups, this palace is actually a therapist. Download the complete TXT collection, this palace is actually a therapist. Latest chapter reading Chapter 1 Wishing you a pleasant journey You are listening at novelfull.audio Chapter 1 Wishing you a pleasant journey Am I, dead? Yu Wang Shu looked at the gray space in front of him and couldn't help but feel lost. Oh, yes, she's dead, dead to the core. Looking back on his life, Yu Wang Shu couldn't help but shed a bitter tear for himself. She is an orphan. Although the country provides sufficient support for orphanages, and without parents, she was able to eat and dress warmly from childhood to adulthood, but ultimately she can only rely on herself to struggle. She is not very smart, but she still managed to get into a good university through her own efforts. After graduation, she worked hard to repay the country's loans and worked hard for the latter half of her life. Later on, she bought a house and settled down in a big city, but also carried a huge mortgage. She worked six to nine every day, treating her client as her ancestor and herself as her grandson. Later, when I finally changed the loan, I thought I could finally live a good life for a few days. However, breast cancer found her. In order to cure the disease, the house was sold and there were no people left. An elderly woman died alone in the hospital ward. There was no money in the passbook. This is her life. It's just a capital disaster. If she had known she would get cervical cancer, she should have been vaccinated earlier. Ah, uh, no, her illness is purely a result of exhaustion. If I had known this earlier, why bother living like a grandson for a house, or a ghost grandson? If there is an afterlife, she will definitely choose to live a healthy and comfortable life, and she will never work overtime again, it would be even better if I could not work. Just as I thought about it, the grey world seemed to brighten up like the clouds and the sun. A man and woman's indistinguishable voice came from the sky. Okay, I heard your wish, and this will give you a halo of life. Wishing you a pleasant journey. Yu Wang Shu. What halo? Crossing. Where to travel through time. Also, who the hell are you? Hello. Who are you? Yu Wang Shu shouted and hurriedly ran up, waving his teeth and claws, only to grab someone's arm. She opened her eyes, but saw a young girl wearing a bun and a water green jacket skirt. The girl weakly said, Little master, I am a little hibiscus. Little hibiscus. I still love dahlias. Hey, wait, am I traveling? Yu Wang Shu lowered her head to look at herself. Her hands were as white and tender as milk, and she was wearing a set of off-white middle clothes and pants. Her hair was long and thick black. As a hard-working woman, her hair had been thinning day by day, and after getting sick, she became completely bald. But now, she has clearly gained a healthy body. Sleeping trough. She died and then lived again. Yu Wang Shu was extremely excited for an instant. She quickly scanned her bedroom. A beech wood and begonia pattern frame bed, a lilac colored curtain hanging over it, the small pavilion window tightly closed, and a sour branch wood antique frame with exquisite colored glass bottles. In the bottles were newly opened magnolias. On the dressing table was a three story high rosewood jewelry box, and there was a large copper mirror. Eh! Mirror. Without saying a word, Yu Wang Shu quickly got off the bed, 
put on the peach blossom embroidered shoes placed on his feet, and rushed to the dressing table. Although the copper mirror is not very clear and even turns yellow and red, it can still be seen that what is reflected in the mirror is a beautiful little girl with picturesque eyebrows and eyes. Yu Wang Shu couldn't help but pinch his face and said, Hiss. It hurts. It's true. She's not dreaming. Little master, what are you doing? Seeing that her little master had turned her fair and tender face red, little Furong couldn't help but feel sorry for her own little master. Little Hibiscus. Yu Wang Shu looked at the beautiful and lovely little girl in front of him, who seemed to be the age of a middle school student. He couldn't help but ask, How old are you? Xiao Furong obediently replied, I am already fifteen years old. At the age of fifteen, she was originally supposed to study in the ivory tower, but in ancient times, she was already a skilled maid. Hey, wait, what does she call me? Little master. Yu Wangshu widened his eyes, meaning that he was in the palace. Am I a concubine? Concubine, isn't she the emperor's mistress? Isn't it the kind of profession where you have to compete with other concubines and even engage in various PK battles with the emperor's wife, who is the empress, for the sake of a cucumber? The winner becomes the empress dowager, while the loser becomes a dead end. I'll go. She didn't want to be entangled in a group of women who had worked hard and fallen ill in her previous life. What she wants is to live a healthy and comfortable life. Wait, who seems to have sent her a halo of life? Where is it? Looking carefully in the mirror again, I didn't see any substantial halo above my head, but it cannot be said that this life halo does not exist. Moreover, this body is indeed full of vitality and looks very healthy. But she wants to live a comfortable life more. Well, it's decided, she shouldn't compete for favor. Let that broken cucumber go to hell. If the brand is accidentally overturned, she will pretend to be sick. As long as I don't compete for favor, as long as I refuse internal competition, then I have no enemies. I can just receive my salary and not work. Yu Wangshu nodded, hoping that the era she traveled through was not the early Ming dynasty and did not require burial, that little hibiscus. Yu Wangshu's eyes sparkled as he looked at his innocent and lovely little palace maid. What position am I, and how many jobs do I have every month? Cough salary. Xiao Furong widened her eyes. Is the master feeling drowsy now? But she obediently replied, the young master is now a sixth grade lady, and as for her salary. 30.6 tails per year, equivalent to three tails per month. Yu Wangshu's black line. Just this little money. Is it enough to eat or enough to drink? Ah no, the palace should be full of food, drink, and salad. Well, in that case, the salary should be lower, after all, she has decided to slack off. Ah no, she doesn't work at all. In that case, she is no longer qualified to be short. This is salary paid for nothing. Yu Wangshu sighed and said, make do with it. Xiao Furong whispered, when a newcomer enters the palace, their position is not high. Little lord, you are as beautiful as a flower. When you are favored, you will definitely be promoted to the throne. Yu Wan felt disdainful in his heart. Working hard for a salary increase. This kind of loss-making deal, she's determined not to do it in her lifetime. She wants to lie flat and go on strike. She wants the emperor's salary for free and refuses to be prostituted by the emperor. Is this a pleasant journey through time? At the same time, in the majestic and luxurious hall of diligence, the emperor, buried in the vast memorials, suddenly felt an itch in his nose, causing him to sneeze heavily. The eunuch in chief, Zhang Ji, hurriedly expressed concern and concern, saying, Your Majesty, you submitted your memorial until midnight last night, and today you woke up before dawn again. If this continues, it may harm the dragon's body. Emperor Yen Zheng's thin and handsome face was full of impatience. Zhang Ji, you are a dead eunuch, now you are more talkative than an old lady. 
the Dayan dynasty has now passed down to the fourth generation of monarchs. Emperor Yan Zheng was in his twenties and fifties. Since ascending the throne for five years, he has been living a life of hunger, clothing, and sleep. With such a diligent emperor, it is naturally a blessing for the court and the people. But it's not a blessing for the harem. It was only five years after the emperor ascended the throne that the first draft was held. Although the newcomers had been in the palace for more than half a month, no one had been summoned yet. I made end changes multiple times and finally passed. Oh, by the way, the original title of this book was, My Palace is a Nurse. But to prevent harmony, it was changed to, My Palace is a Therapist. Seeking Collection, Recommendation, and Fattening. End of this chapter. Chapter 2 You Won and One You Bend the Moon. You are listening at NovelFull.audio. Chapter 2 You Won and One You Bend the Moon The next day, Yu Wang Shu woke up with a string of memories in his mind that did not belong to him. It goes without saying, it was the life experience of the original owner Yu Shunu for 17 years. Yu Shunu, her maiden name is Zhuo Wan Wan. Yu Wan Wan and Yu Wan Wan have cute names. His father, Yu Mingda, held the official position of the 6th rank Taipusi Temple Chief. Therefore, after entering the palace, Yu Wan Wan was granted the title of 6th rank lady. It is worth mentioning that the five newly promoted concubines held the same rank as his father, this is really special, Pindad. However, in this year's draft, it seems that the emperor deliberately avoided high dot ranking and noble women. Lu Baolin, who comes from the best background, only had a 5th rank official as his father. Therefore, among the five newcomers, Yu Wan Wan surprisingly ranked second. After entering the palace, he was assigned to live in the east wing of the Luan Palace. This Luan Palace is just a slightly remote and ordinary palace garden in the east six palaces. There is no main seat in the main hall of Luan Palace, while the Changle Hall in the east side hall houses Lady Yu, while the Anqing Pavilion in the west side hall houses the newcomer Xing Xiaoxia. Changle Hall, contented with Changle, Yu Wang Shu quite likes the name of this hall. Being able to come back to life from death and having a healthy body, she is very satisfied. The imperial harem of the Dayan dynasty was divided into seven grades and fifteen levels. The head of the harem was naturally the empress, and below the empress were the first grade noble concubines. Under the noble concubines were four first dot class concubines and six second dot grade noble concubines. Under the noble concubines were the noble concubines, the noble concubines, the noble concubines, and the noble concubines. Each of these three levels could have up to nine members each, known as the 27th generation of women. There was no fixed number of beauties, beauties, talents, baolin, ladies, maids, and young envoys. From the noble concubines onwards, she can be considered a high dot ranking concubine who can hold the position of a palace chief and be respectfully called empress. The concubines below the noble concubines can only be called little masters. Nowadays, there are many vacant positions in the imperial harem, and the positions of noble concubines are vacant. The positions of noble concubines are only held by Empress Yi of Rome and Empress Yu of Xiang. Above the position of noble concubines are only Lan Gui, and below her are two old people, Fang Jieyu and Qin Kairen. Below her are Lu Baolin, Yu Shunu, Qi Kainu, Qin Xianxi, and Jing Xiaoxi, who were newly recruited to the palace half a month ago. The name of our country was Dian, which was to recapture the Han people's world from the Yuan and Mongolian dynasties. Therefore, it is roughly equivalent to the Ming dynasty, and its clothing, attire, customs, and habits are also similar to those of the Ming dynasty. These are just ordinary information. In the original brain, there are still some unusual information. For example, during the reign of Emperor Taizu of the Dian dynasty, novel things such as cement, soap, glass, alcohol, white sugar, spinning machines, and weaving machines emerged, as well as telescopes and red barbarian cannons that could be used in military affairs, as well as smallpox prevention and treatment of malaria with Jinji Nazwang. 
It is obvious that during the reign of Emperor Taizu, a group of travelers appeared in clusters. These travelers were all taken under the command of Emperor Taizu and contributed their wisdom and strength to the prosperity of the Dian dynasty. Undoubtedly, these people also gained glory and wealth, which is truly enviable. Unfortunately, the good things that could make money were invented by others, and Yu Wang Shu felt lonely wearing them. But on second thought, she came to eat and die, seemingly without any losses. Oh, by the way, I don't know what the halo of life really does or how it works. Yu Wang Shu couldn't figure it out for a moment, so he secretly gave himself a pulse. Although her cancer has not been cured by traditional Chinese medicine, she has become a good doctor after a long illness. She has learned to observe, listen, ask, and understand. Although her medical skills are not as good as those old Chinese medicine practitioners, it is still okay to adjust her body. Well, my pulse is steady and my bones are really good. I looked at my eyes, ears, mouth, and nose in the mirror and murmured, spring days are dry and dry, and people are a bit dry. It's not a big problem, so drink plenty of hot water. It's best to drink some goji berries. At this moment, the palace maid Xiaoju walked in and said, Master, what are you talking about? Yu Wang Shu smiled and said, It's nothing, that little chrysanthemum. Take some silver and go to the imperial pharmacy to help me get two tails of goji berries. Soaking goji berries in hot water is worth having. Xiaoju quickly exclaimed, I'll go now. Hey, wait a minute, add two more chrysanthemums. Yu Wang Shu quickly added as he saw red blood streaks in the eyes of the palace made Xiaoju. According to the rules in the palace, even if it's late at night, the young masters must be attended to by someone around them. Therefore, those responsible for guarding the night are bound to stay up late and cause mental distress. It's best to drink some chrysanthemum tea. Ah! Xiaoju was stunned. Yu Wang Shu said again, We need Gongju. Gongju nourishes the liver and brightens the eyes, and its cold nature is relatively mild. Women should eat less cold heavy foods. Got it, little master. Although Xiaoju doesn't understand why I want these things, they can't be considered medicine, and there's no need to hire a doctor. You can get them for a little money. After having breakfast, the palace maid Xiaofurong quickly walked in and bent her knees to report, Little Lord, the envoy Zheng has arrived. Zheng wore a willow yellow soft satin jacket and a willow green robe, which made her face fresh and pleasant. She was only fifteen or sixteen years old, and her body was soft and blessed. Her voice was like a yellow warbler dripping, greetings to Sister Yu. Although Yu Wang Shu was not used to being called sister by strangers, he quickly helped Xing Shi up. You don't need to be polite, he quickly instructed the palace maids beside him, Xiao Ju, serve tea quickly. Yes. Xiao Ju responded and after a moment, she presented two cups of goji berry tea. Although Zheng Xiaoshi did not come from a high background, she did not show any timidity. She curiously looked at the east side hall and saw that it was almost the same as her own west side hall. She withdrew her gaze and looked at this lady Yu, thinking to herself that her face was so tender that she could squeeze water out of it Yu Wangshu's back furrowed when Jing Xiaoshi looked at him and said, Why is Xiaoshi looking at me like this? Jing Xiaoshi gave a sweet smile and his voice was also extremely sweet. Sister Yu is beautiful, so it's hard to resist taking a few more glances. Yu Wang Shu was a bit embarrassed to be praised. In her previous life, she was only of average appearance, but in this life, she has picked up a good skin bag for nothing. Her cheeks are slightly red, and she quickly said, Zheng Xiaoshi's appearance is also not ordinary. Zheng's appearance, placed among ordinary people, is indeed a beauty, but in the beautiful harem, it is somewhat ordinary. However, Zheng's voice is delicate and sweet, but she has a natural and good voice. If it were in modern times, singing a song online would be enough to become an internet celebrity. Unfortunately, he was born in ancient times and was selected to enter the palace. Zheng Xiaoshi touched his face and thought to himself, after all, 
he is one step behind you sure. Jing Xiaoxi gave a sweet smile and asked coquettishly, Sister Yu, are you still going to the Tsuihua Palace to play cards with Chen Kairan today? During the days when the original owner, Lady Yu, entered the palace, she often went out to visit, with the most frequent being the Tsuihua Palace. But Yu Wang Xu just wanted to lie flat, so he waved his hand and said, I won't go anymore, I always lose money. That's right, after half a month in the palace, Yu Shunu lost two or thirty tails of silver. This is all real gold and silver. As soon as he thought of this, Yu Wang Shu couldn't help but feel heartbroken. The original owner, this despicable woman. Watching her look of cherishing money, Zheng Xiaoxi couldn't help but smile and thought to himself, Yu's thoughts are really easy to guess. I went to Jitsue Pavilion the day before yesterday and also lost two tails of silver, Zheng Xiaoxi said with a bright smile. Yu Wang Shu couldn't help but think to himself, yeah, you are also a spendthrift woman. Speaking, Zheng Xiaoxi just picked up the tea cup. After taking a sip, his expression couldn't help but change slightly. He looked down and saw that there were four or five small red fruits in the tea cup. Aren't these goji berries? Yu Wang Shu smiled and said, I've been feeling a bit dry these past few days, so I'll drink some goji berries to moisturize my lungs. Zheng Xiaoxi smiled and said, Sister you still knows how to treat illnesses. Yu Wang Shu quickly waved her hand and sneered, I don't really understand. She was just taking care of her health. After dying, she took great care of her body. In the blink of an eye, it was already the fourth day that Yu Wang Shu had crossed over. These days, Zheng Xiaoxi comes over to sit for a while every day. She looks good and speaks well, but Yu Wang Shu doesn't dislike her. As a humble little lady, Yu Wang Shu had only two palace maids and a eunuch to serve her. The palace maids were Xiao Furong and Xiao Ju, and the eunuch's name was Xiao Xingzi. Although they were not very young, they were all diligent and clean inside and outside, making her comfortable to serve from head to toe. By contrast, Yu Wang Shu, a young lady, is extremely tired and lazy. She sleeps three times a day. For breakfast, she needs to eat freshly ground soybean milk, hot wonton or noodles in soup, and fresh and delicious dishes. Lunch and dinner need meat and vegetables. Of course, she is a famous concubine. This small requirement for food can be easily met by the imperial dining room of the eastern six palaces. The important thing is that after breakfast every day, Lady Yu needs to take a nap, take a nap after lunch, and after dinner. Of course, she still goes to bed directly. Little Farong Nahun, what's wrong with you, little master? Isn't it that I haven't been able to stay up all along? The young master is too sad. Xiao Furong was very worried. I won't go to Lan Gui's Empress Dowager's palace to admire flowers these days, nor will I go to Chen Kairan to play leaf cards. I've been confined to the side hall all day and don't feel bored. Yu Wang Shu hesitated and said, I always gather in other people's palaces all day. I'm afraid of getting annoyed. Xiao Furong smiled sweetly and said, How could that be? Chen Kairan loves playing leaf cards the most. Yesterday, she even called Lu Baolin, Qi Kainu, and Qin Xianxi to play cards, and they played for most of the day. Yu Wang Shu. It seems that Yi Pai is an ancient version of Mahjong, right? Is this Chen Kairan addicted? Yu Wang Shu couldn't help but ask curiously, who loses and who wins? Xiao Ju whispered, after all, Chen Kairan is the biological mother of the second prince, and her position is higher. Naturally, she won more. I seriously suspect that Chen Kairan is intentionally trying to make money. Yu Wang Shu pondered with ill intentions. Yu Wang Shu muttered, I always play cards like this. Over time, I'm sure my wallet won't be able to handle it. Xiao Furong and Xiao Ju were both stunned, and then couldn't help but cover their lips and smirk. As expected, the little master was really in love with money. Yu Wang Shu looked into the eyes of the palace made Xiao Ju, and the red blood had already faded. 
she warned, whoever stays up late in the future will brew a pot of chrysanthemum tea for themselves. The young girl should pay more attention to health. Previously, Xiaoju did not expect that chrysanthemum tea was actually meant for them to drink during their vigil. Although they didn't like the scent of Gongju, the little master's loving heart still moved them deeply. Xiaofu Rong whispered, although this tribute chrysanthemum is not very precious, it is also a tribute. If outsiders find out, they will definitely say that the young master is too arrogant and indulges the servants below. Where do these servants deserve to drink such good things? Yu Wang Shu smiled and said, If you don't tell me, how would outsiders know? Xiaoju and Xiaofurong looked at each other, when did Xiaoju fail to learn? From now on, it will be updated at 18.00 every day. End of this chapter Chapter 3 Cousin Collecting Mad Demons You are listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 3 Cousin Collecting Mad Demons The palace made Xiaoju brought another cup of goji berry tea and caught a glimpse of the new leaf blooming ink orchid on the beech tree stand. She couldn't help but show a joyful expression and said, Little Lord, the ink orchid that Lan Gui Pin sent you has come back to life. This Lan Gui Pin is also one of the high dot ranking concubines in the palace. She has a cold temperament and likes to grow flowers. When the original owner first entered the palace, she visited the Wei Rui Palace to pay her respects. Lan Gui Pin then gave her a precious pot of ink orchids. But the original owner, it seems that he is not very good at raising flowers, and the palace maids below will not serve such precious flowers and plants, so he gave them half dead. After Yu Wang Shu arrived, he didn't pay attention to the pot of ink orchids. He didn't expect to ignore it and instead grow new leaves. In fact, when it comes to raising flowers, it is important to avoid excessive care. Watering them today and fertilizing them tomorrow can easily kill them. On the Rui small flower table beside Arhat's couch is a round purple sand basin, in which green moss is abundant. Seven or eight dark green long leaves are like jade belts. The two new leaves in the center have just emerged, and the color is slightly light, but the new leaves mean survival. Yu Wang Shu touched his chin and looked around. Although Molan doesn't have high requirements for sunlight, the ventilation and breathability here are really poor, can it still support him? Well, move it to the window, Yu Wang Shu said. Think about Lan Gui Pin, who is obsessed with raising flowers all day, and Shin Kairen, who is addicted to playing cards. The Dian Palace is really full of talented people. However, the environment in the harem is also relatively harmonious. After all, the emperor doesn't sleep in the harem anymore. From the empress to these little concubines, they are all out of favor, so there is no need to compete for favor. The relationship between the empresses is called harmony. Empress Meng, the wife of the emperor who tied her hair, was pregnant with one child when the emperor was still a county king. However, at that time, it was during the chaos of the kings, and the current emperor, who did not participate in the usurpation of the throne, was also injured by stray arrows. As a result, Meng was frightened and had a miscarriage, and even completely lost her fertility. Although the emperor doesn't often come to the harem, he loves and respects Empress Meng very much. Later, in the eastern palace, his concubine Chen gave birth to a son. The emperor despised Chen's illiteracy and entrusted the son to the empress for custody. This became the second prince and the only son of the emperor today. This Chen is also the talented Chen who loves playing mahjong. In addition, there was also the eldest prince born to Empress Xiangyu, who unfortunately died young in infancy. However, later on, Empress Xiang gave birth to the eldest princess, which can be considered as a refuge. The emperor only has one prince and one princess. Having both children is considered very good in modern times. But in ancient times, especially when it comes to emperors, it is truly a matter of scarcity of offspring, which is worrying. Xiao Furong also sighed deeply, when Lady Lan Gui was in the eastern palace, she gave birth to a little princess, but unfortunately she died before reaching full moon. Since the emperor ascended the throne, 
he has been busy with politics. It has been five years since she ascended the throne, and only Lady Rome is now pregnant. Rome Fei Yi, one of the highest-ranking concubines in the current palace, was the granddaughter of Princess Rome Kong. Two years ago, Princess Rome Kong fell seriously ill and worried about her only granddaughter. Before her death, she entrusted her to the emperor, which is why the emperor accepted Yi as his concubine. However, after Yi entered the palace, Princess Da Chang passed away immediately. He took care of her grandmother's filial piety for a year before beginning to take care of her. Therefore, she is only four months pregnant now. Yu Wang shoot sked and said, So, Empress Rong is still the emperor's cousin. Cousin, she is pregnant again, and when she gives birth to a child, if she were a prince, it would be just around the corner to be granted the title of noble consort. Xiao Furong smiled and said, Isn't that right? Xiang Fei is also the emperor's cousin, said Xiao Ju on the side Yu Wang Shu. What? Xiao Furong nodded and said, Yes, Empress Xiang is the daughter of Marquis Changlong, the younger brother of the Holy Mother. Yu Wang Shu widened his eyes and said, Another cousin. I remember that the mother of the Empress Dowager was also the cousin of the Empress Dowager, said Xiao Ju. Pulling her finger, Yu Wang Shu stood up with disbelief in his eyes. Is the Empress also the Emperor's cousin? Yes, three cousins. Is this Emperor a cousin collecting maniacs? Xiao Furong couldn't help but say, I'm joking, the Empress is three years older than the Emperor. Yu Wang Shu's black line said, Oh, it's my cousin. Beasts. At this moment, Yan Zheng, the Beast Emperor of the Qingjing Hall, once again felt his nose itch. He wanted to hold it back, so as not to let Zhang Ji talk like an old lady again. But he couldn't help but say, Azu. A big sneeze made general manager Zhang Jisen's heart ache. In the Changle Hall of Luan Palace, Yu Wang Shu was almost unconscious. What's going on in the harem? The three highest positions in the harem are Empress is the cousin, and Xiang Consort Rome is the cousin. Yu Wang Shu suddenly thought of a great book. A dream of red mansions. However, she could never pin the emperor she had never met on Jia Baoyu, after all, this diligent monarch who had not entered the harem for most of the month and had several stunning newcomers sitting there without even looking at him. No matter how it looks, it has nothing to do with being lascivious. The next morning, Yu Wang Shu was forcefully pulled out of the warm bed by Little Furong. Little Furong could no longer care about her dignity. After waking up to no avail, she had to shout, Little Lord, today is fifteen, and all the concubines in the palace are going to Fengyi Palace to greet the Empress. You can't miss the time. The Empress is very virtuous, but due to a miscarriage in the past, her body and bones have not been very good. Fortunately, there are fewer imperial concubines, so it is not difficult to manage the harem. The empress has a kind and generous nature, treating the six palaces generously. Therefore, the concubines do not need to meditate in the morning every day, but only come to Fengyi Palace every five to ten to pay their respects. And today, it is the fifteenth day of the third month in the fifth year of Tianyu. Got it. Yu Wang Shu reluctantly left his beloved bed. Although Empress Meng was lenient, as a subordinate, he couldn't be late or leave early. After all, he would have to live under Empress Meng's command for the rest of his life and wait to die. What kind of clothes should I wear, young master? Little Furong hugged her and sat down in front of the dressing table. Yu Wang Shu originally wanted to say something simple, but when it came to his mouth, just keep it the same as before. Too simple, isn't it just being unconventional? Which concubine in the harem doesn't make herself look beautiful? Anyway, with the original owner's gold and jade jewelry, it is impossible to surpass the high dot ranking concubines in the palace. All right, I'll save you. Without saying a word, Xiao Fu Rong went to the wardrobe and picked up a begonia twig wrapped coat and a pomegranate red skirt. She also combed her in a beautiful and luxurious bun, making her look shiny and beautiful, which really added a lot of color. 
Yuan Shu nodded, everything was fine except for a slightly heavy head and a slightly drooping earlobe. After hastily having breakfast, he headed towards Funyi Palace. Fortunately, this Luan Palace is not too far from the Empress's Funyi Palace, and it only takes about half an hour to walk. In her position as a young lady, it is obviously impossible for anyone to lift her up. In this harem, there are ten concubines, both new and old, coming together to pay their respects, which looks quite lively. However, Yu Wang Shu quietly counted the heads, oh no, one was missing. After a brief thought, I also guessed who was absent. At this moment, two beautiful palace maids wearing flower crowns walked out of the inner room, supporting a woman dressed in gorgeous clothes, covered in emerald beads but with a haggard appearance. It goes without saying that she is now the Empress Meng. Meng is not stunning, but her eyebrows are gentle and quite approachable. Upon seeing the Empress, the concubines all bowed their knees and said in unison, Greet Empress. Meng sat on a purple sandalwood phoenix patterned throne, coughed softly, and raised her hand, saying, Everyone, please take your seat free of charge. Empress Xie. Yeah. The concubines were divided and sat on both sides according to their positions. And the first chair on the left side was suddenly empty. After everyone sat down, immediately a palace mermaid entered and served tea in dim sum. Yu Wang Shu, who was secretly looking at the concubines, was immediately attracted by dim sum. Wow, this crabapple cake looks delicious. The dim sum presented today is crabapple cake and glutinous rice roll. The crabapple cake emits sweet fragrance, and the glutinous rice roll looks white, tender, soft, and soft. It must be delicious. However, Xiang Fei and Lan Gui Pin have not even started yet. As a little lady, she can only endure it. End of this chapter. Chapter 4 Empresses Gather Strange Lu Bao Lin. You are listening at Novel Full. Audio. Chapter 4 Empresses Gather Strange Lu Bao Lin. Empress Meng glanced at the empty chair and immediately said in a warm voice, Empress Rong's vomiting has not subsided, so this palace has waived her invitation. On the first chair on the right, Xiang Fei Yu smiled and said, Sister Rome is already four months old, but she is still very happy. It's hard to say, she's pregnant with a prince. Empress Meng sighed and said, the emperor's offspring are rare. It would be great if he were really a prince. Sitting next to the empty chair, Lan Guipin picked up the exquisite colorful flower and bird teacup with orchids in her hand, took a sip, and said softly, the new sisters have never seen the face of Empress Rome until now. Empress Meng glanced at the fresh and tender-looking newcomers below and said, being with the harem, there will be plenty of opportunities to meet in the future. Fang Jieyu, who was sitting under the hands of Consort Xiang, smiled and said, it's okay if we don't see Empress Rome. But the new sisters have been in the palace for over half a month, and even the emperor hasn't seen them. Speaking of it, I'm afraid no one outside will believe them. Yu Wang Shu secretly looked in his eyes, and it seemed that the physical condition of the concubines in the harem was not very good. Although the empress wore heavy makeup and couldn't see her complexion, she was clearly lacking in qi and blood, and her body was very weak. Xiang Fei was plump, but there were acne marks at the corners of her mouth, indicating heavy dampness and spleen and stomach deficiency. Lan Gui's body was too thin and weak, and she looked a bit blood deficient. As for Fang Jieyu, there was no sign of anything wrong at the moment. Yu Wang Shu couldn't help complaining to himself. I'm not a doctor. Then he quickly turned to look at everyone's looks, Xiang Fei had a round and round face, with a smile on her eyebrows and eyes. However, in terms of her appearance, she could only be considered a mid to high position. Lan Guipin's demeanor was extraordinary, her hands were white and delicate, and she even looked elegant when drinking tea. Fang Jieyu, on the other hand, was younger and only looked around twenty years old. She had a beautiful appearance and a soft and gentle voice, which was no less impressive than her new sisters. The one who remained silent was undoubtedly Chen Kairin. Chen Siren's appearance was not outstanding, only his eyebrows and eyes were more delicate. 
The rest are the newcomers who have entered the palace in this draft. Lu Baolin, who holds the highest position among the newcomers, is a woman with a smiling face. Seeing this, Lu Baolin quickly smiled and said, Although I am in the harem, I also know that the emperor is busy with court affairs and may have neglected the harem. Empress Meng nodded with satisfaction and said, It's hard for you to be so sensible. After praising Lu Baolin, Empress Meng said again, I will remind the emperor well when I come back. Yu Wang Shu silently roast. Remind her husband to go to bed with his wife. Becoming the queen is really not easy. Lu Baolin couldn't help but blush and quickly picked up the tea cup to take a sip. Yu Wang Shu. Why do you drink tea without eating dim sum one by one? Empress Meng looked up and down at Lu Baolin and couldn't help but wonder, why is Lu Baolin dressed so plainly? Yu Wang Shu only then noticed that Lu Baolin was wearing a moon dot white poplin loose sleeve jacket and a shallow lake green pleated skirt. He wore a low bun on his head, with only a pair of jade hairpins and two budding magnolias on the bun, and his whole body was extremely pure. Look at the Empress Dowager in the palace, which one is not surrounded by pearls and lush greenery. This Lu Baolin is simply a blade of green leaves among the flowers. Lu Baolin was born young and beautiful, and his attire did not detract from his beauty. He also had a distinct and elegant appearance, but, Empress Meng couldn't help but think of something, her expression instantly solemn. She quickly asked, but the Ministry of Internal Affairs confiscated your dowry. A dowry is a dowry. In ordinary households, it is naturally the responsibility of parents to invest in preparation, and relatives, friends, and elders will also provide makeup. But if you enter the palace as a concubine, it's a different story. After all, not everyone can afford to have a head full of pearls and silk. In order not to damage the royal dignity, when a concubine enters the palace, the royal capital will contribute and the Ministry of Internal Affairs will be responsible for preparing it. Although the dowry may vary according to the rank, even if the rank is low, there are at least two sets of decent heads and clothes. So, when Lu Baolin was dressed so plain, Empress Meng first doubted whether the Internal Affairs Office was full of personal wealth. Lu Baolin quickly waved his hand and said, The Empress has misunderstood. The Imperial Household Department did not withhold the dowry of the concubines. It is the concubines themselves who do not like luxury. Empress Meng's face softened a lot. Frugality is certainly good, but now that the world is prosperous and the world is at peace, the emperor is treating the six palaces kindly. If you are too frugal and keep the imperial dowry in a high cabinet, it will disappoint the emperor's wishes. Lu Baolin's face suddenly changed, and he quickly bent his knees and said, It was my concubine who neglected. I will remember the teachings of the empress. Empress Meng sighed and said, I don't mean to blame you in this palace. At a young age, you moved away from your parents and family and became a concubine in the palace. It's also possible that you had a momentary thought. Speaking, Empress Meng smiled and said, Besides, since you have such a good color, you should dress up well and live up to it. Lu Baolin lowered his head and murmured, Yes. Yu Wang Shu couldn't help but think to himself, this Empress Meng is not like a big wife, but more like a kind dot hearted big sister. Even. A bit of a mother rushing around, um. This must be my illusion. However, this Lu Baolin is indeed strange. As far as she knows, the Lu family is the best in terms of family background among the newcomers. Of course, she is not considered a high family, but just a daughter of a fifth grade trained doctor. In theory, one must also wear gold and silver on weekdays. Why did you enter the palace and instead prefer simplicity? What is she drawing? Yu Wang Shu thinks Lu Baolin is very strange. But forget it, is it none of my business? She doesn't want to be the second mother in the harem. Meng, First Lady, Empress. At this moment, Xiang Fei smiled and said, Empress, don't worry too much. Lu Baolin is still young, just teach him slowly. Empress Meng Su sighed and smiled again, 
a few days ago, your spleen and stomach were not harmonious. How are you doing now? Xianfei smiled and said, what's wrong with her spleen and stomach? It's just that children are picky eaters. Empress Meng couldn't help but laugh and said, Princess of the royal family, why bother being picky? Even if she wants to eat dragon liver and phoenix gallbladder, it's up to her. Xiang Fei couldn't help but laugh angrily and said, Sister, don't get used to her anymore. This child is becoming more delicate. I'm really worried. I don't know what kind of family in law will tolerate her in the future. Empress Meng covered her lips and smiled, You've been worrying about her marriage since she's only seven years old. Xiang Fei sighed and said, Raising a child for a hundred years will bring you ninety. Nine worries. Yu Wangshu couldn't help but wonder that the relationship between the Empress and the Xiang consort didn't seem like a first wife or a second wife, but rather like the sisters of an ordinary family. Yes, Empress Meng's mother is the cousin of the Empress Dowager, and the father of consort Xiang is the biological brother of the Empress Dowager. She has known each other since childhood. Moreover, Empress Xiang only has one daughter under her knee, which poses no threat to the Empress. Even so, the Empress can be considered virtuous and benevolent. But why don't we eat dim sum? If you don't eat it again, it will be completely cold. Hey! Never mind, the Empress and Empress Xiang are chattering about the future marriage of the eldest princess, and obviously no longer paying attention to these few little concubines who sit far away. Wow, Yu Wangshu has quick eyes and hands, and has already squeezed a piece of begonia cake into his mouth. Woo! It smells so sweet and delicious. Yu Wangshu's eyes lit up. Shu! I pinched another sticky rice roll and quickly put it into my mouth. So soft and sticky, it's still filled with red bean paste. It's a bit like sweet potatoes, and also a bit like glutinous rice balls. Soft yet not sticky to teeth, sweet yet not greasy. The queen was still chatting with Xiang Fei with great interest and didn't even notice her side. Yu Wangshu's movements were agile, and his eyes occasionally glanced around. However, her actions could not be concealed from others, but from Chen Kairen, who was only separated by a mahogany table. After all, dim sum was on the mahogany tea table. As Chen Kairen was drinking tea, he was about to take a piece of dim sum to eat, but he was surprised to find that there were only two pieces of crabapple cake and one piece of glutinous rice roll left in those two pastel high foot plates. Chen Kairen. There is a mahogany square small table between each two seats for tea and dim sum. Chen Kairen has not touched his heart, so it is needless to say that Lady Yu has eaten it. Chen Kairen couldn't help but look at the beautiful and lovely little face of Lady Yu, and she looked very formal. Only the dim sum residue on her mouth had not been cleaned. Being looked at by Chen Kairen like this made Yu Wangshu feel embarrassed. Did she get caught? Chen Kairen saw it in his eyes and didn't say anything. Instead, he generously squeezed a piece of crabapple cake and stuffed it into his mouth. Yu Wangshu. Is she unnecessary to eat dim sum like a thief? She quickly took a sneak glance around and suddenly realized that Qin Xian, who was sitting at the end, was also looking at her. Oh no! She has Qin Kairen above and Qin Xianche below. Her actions may not be noticed by others, so people around her cannot be blind. Awkwardly, Yu Wangshu's face was full of awkward uppercase letters. Fortunately, Qin Xianche quickly averted his gaze, looking as if he had unintentionally exposed it. Yu Wangshu finally breathed a sigh of relief. At this moment, the Empress and the Xiangfei finally finished chatting and said to Chen Kairen, Are you going to stay, Sister Chen? Chen Kairen quickly stood up and said, No, my concubine has arranged to have tea with Lady Yu. Yu Wangshu. When did I have an appointment with you? The Queen nodded and instructed the concubines to disperse. Empress Meng was helped back to her inner room by the palace maids and sighed repeatedly, why does she need to avoid Jinner like this? Second Prince Yan Qingzhen, who has been raised under Empress Meng's lap since her full moon, 
is now six years old. A beautiful female historian named Kaiyuan, wearing a flower crown and holding a cup of tea, said, perhaps it's because it's the fifteenth day today. No matter how busy the emperor is, every fifteenth day, he will always come to Funyi Palace. If Chen Kairan is also present at that time, the emperor may not be happy. Meng Ho was taken aback and said, the emperor is busy with the northwest drought, so he may not come. Even if he does, he will ask someone to send a message in advance. At this moment, the Grand Chancellor of the Imperial Palace, Zhang Zai, arrived and said, the Emperor will come to accompany you for lunch at noon. Empress Meng smiled slightly and quickly ordered, Kaiyuan, quickly go to the King Suzi to inform the second prince to come over for lunch. This child has not seen his father for some time. The second prince entered the King Suzi to study last year, not very intelligent, but also diligent and sensible. Yes, Empress. At the same time, Yu Wangshu has been invited by Chen Kairan to her Tsuehua Palace. With Chen Siren's position, it is impossible to live in the main hall of the Tsuehua Palace, but the Jitsue Pavilion in the east side hall is also very spacious, and the decorations in the pavilion are much better than her Changel Hall. After all, she is a fifth grade talented person, and she is just a sixth grade lady. Moreover, Chen Kairan can also be considered an old man in the harem, and she has only been in the palace for half a month. These days, there's no need to send contracts when signing, just sign online. End of this chapter. Chapter 5 Murdered Paranoia Qin Xian Shi. You are listening at novelfull.audio. Chapter 5 Murdered Paranoia Qin Xian Shi. The Jitsue Pavilion does not live up to its name with many flowers and bonsai placed inside and outside the pavilion, creating a lush greenery. After finishing his seat, Yu Wangshu couldn't help but say, it said that Lady Lan likes to grow flowers. I see that the flowers and trees here are also well taken care of by the talented person. Chen Kairan waved his hand and said, they are all taken care of by the maids below. I don't have the patience. Moreover, there are many precious orchids and grasses in the palace of Lan Gui, which are much more delicate than the flowers and grasses in my pavilion. Yu Wang Shugwiner, yes, although there are many flowers and trees in Jitsue Pavilion, most of them are ordinary flowers. She picked up the tea cup and took a sip, and the taste was fragrant. However, compared to the tea in the Empress Palace, it seemed to lack some flavor, and it was hard to describe. Chen Kairan said, my tea here is just an ordinary tea, which is incomparable to the Empress Dowager's palace. General Yu Xu, let's drink it. This talented person Chen is a straightforward person. Yu Wang Xu said with a smile, it's really the same taste as my tea. These low-dot-level concubines drink a regular Luan Gua Pian tea, and no one should dislike anyone. Yu Wang Xu hesitated for a moment before whispering, why didn't the talented person stay when Empress Dowager asked her to stay? Empress Dowager's intention should be to make Chen Kairan and the second prince closer, indicating her virtuous and magnanimous demeanor. Chen Kairan, who has always been straightforward, couldn't help but sigh and say, I know your highness is doing very well. I rarely see him, so he can live a better life. Yu Wang Xu smiled and said, Do talented people worry too much? I see the Empress being virtuous and benevolent. Chen Kairan pouted and said, The Emperor has always despised me for being rude, fearing that I may harm His Highness. Well, I'm afraid it might displease the Emperor. The relationship between mother and son's bloodline is human, after all, murmured Yu Wang Shu in a low voice. The Empress has a broad heart, but it is this Emperor who has a very small heart, you couldn't help but spat. At this moment, in the Fengyi Palace. The gathering of husband and wife, father and son in the same hall is somewhat of an ordinary family's joyful and harmonious state. Although the second prince was young and reserved, he couldn't conceal his joy when he saw his father. At the moment when he was talking about Tianluan, Emperor Yan Zheng suddenly felt a cold sensation and once again felt his nose itch and a big sneeze. Meng Ho's expression tightened, showing concern and anger. In the cold spring weather, 
your majesty should cherish the dragon body more. Yen Zheng rubbed his nose, but for some reason, he has been wanting to sneeze lately. He waved his hand and said, this morning, the court magistrate just invited the ping and pulse and said I'm fine. Empress Meng breathed a sigh of relief. After finishing his lunch, the second prince bid farewell to his parents and quickly went to study in the diligent study room. Empress Meng sent the palace maids around her and said, Recently, Empress Rong has been vomiting heavily and has become thin. If your majesty has time, she will go to the Yufu palace to have a look. Emperor Yan Jing nodded and said, I understand. Meng Ho said again, and there are also newly appointed concubines. Your Majesty, don't be too talkative about concubines. Even ordinary concubines who are brought in by ordinary families haven't been left to dry for so long. Your Majesty has been so anxious these past few days that her appetite is not good. Yen Jing rubbed his eyebrows and said, It's not that I want to neglect the harem, it's really that the previous dynasty was busy. On my aunt's side, I will explain. This grand consort is the younger sister of Empress Dowager Yu, the late birth mother of the emperor. This selection was also co-hosted by grand consort Yu and the empress. Nowadays, the newlyweds have been in the palace for a long time, but they cannot summon good luck. This worried emperor's heiress and aunt is so worried that she can't even eat. Meng Ho chuckled angrily and said, Your Majesty, if you have time to explain to Empress Dowager Gui, it would be better to flip back the sign. Yen Jing sighed and said, Got it. Yen Jing never knew how thin he was as an emperor with only one son under his knee. Although Qing Zhen is relatively healthy, his talent is truly mediocre on the other end, Yu Wang Shu had a lunch at Chen Siren's place before returning to the Changle Hall of the Luan Palace. Having eaten and drunk enough, she wanted to take a good nap, but unexpectedly, a guest came knocking at her door. Qin Xian Shi. What is she doing here? Yu Wang Shu couldn't help but think that this morning at Feng Yi Palace, it seemed that Qin Xian Shi also saw her stealing food. Ah ba, she was eating openly. Please invite her in. In the afternoon, Changle Hall was warm and bright, and on the flower stand were two pots of not so precious, but very well growing buds of orchids. Qin Xian walked in gracefully, and Yu Wang Shu suddenly noticed that Qin Xian had a very slender waist. Sister Yu, Qin Xian's attendant Ping Ting saluted. The seventh rank attendant was two levels lower than her, a lady. However, as both lower level concubines, Yu Wang Shu was still busy and courteous, politely inviting Qin Xian to take her seat. Qin Snow.White appearance is extremely outstanding. Well, the five people selected this time, in terms of appearance, are all top.notch beauties. I heard that all five of them were carefully selected by the Empress Dowager and Empress Dowager before staying. The Empress goes without saying that this noble Empress Dowager is said to be the late Empress Dowager's biological sister, also known as the Emperor's biological aunt. Oh, by the way, it's still Aunt Xiang. This harem, a bunch of relatives. Qin Xian, the attendant, pursed her red lips lightly and glanced at the close palace made next to Yu Wang Shu, saying, I want to say a few thoughtful words to my sister. Can you please hold back, sister? Yu Wang Shu. What does it mean? Although she couldn't understand what Qin Xianzhi was trying to say, she was still aroused by curiosity and quickly ordered little Furong to wait in the outer room. As soon as the palace maid left, Qin Xian, the attendant, asked in a low voice, Chen Kairen is extremely enthusiastic. Sister you must have stayed in Jitsue Pavilion for a long time, right? In fact, Yu Wangshu's body is now of the same age as the Qin family, and in terms of months, he is actually Qin's chosen attendant. But Yu Wangshu held a high position, so he became his sister. Yu Wangshu smiled and said, I had lunch and just returned. Qin Xian's attendant was somewhat surprised. This lady Yu was dining in an unfamiliar person's palace. Oh, yes, I also used a lot of dim sum in Fengyi Palace this morning, and it seems that I have drunk all the tea. For a moment, Qin Xianzhi didn't know what to say. 
Sister has a naive and pure mind, Qin Shenqiu said. Yu Wangshu's black line. Naive and pure. Call me childish. Your sister. Qin Xian couldn't help sighing sadly, didn't you notice that all the concubines have never touched dim sum except you and Qin Kairan? Yu Wangshu was embarrassed, of course she noticed it. She also wants to wait for the high dot ranking concubine to speak first. Well, since the empress gives teen dim sum, it doesn't matter if they are used. If they are not allowed to eat, why bring them up? Perhaps a high dot ranking concubine pays too much attention to her appearance, afraid of falling into pieces. Qin Xianqiu seemed to choke on dim sum. After a long time, he whispered, this thing at the entrance should be careful again. Hmm Yu Wangshu just realized that there was something wrong with the taste. Please be careful when entering the food. Be careful what? Be careful of being toxic. Yu Wangshu was stunned. Is this Qin Xian attendant suffering from delusions of being murdered? In broad daylight, in front of everyone's eyes, the empress poisoned the concubines. Unless the empress is brainwashed. Looking at the beautiful and charming Yu Shunu's silly appearance, Qin Xianqiu couldn't help but show a look of pity. And Qin Kairan, if we just go play cards with her, it's okay. Why is your sister still staying at Jitsue Pavilion for dinner? Yu Wangshu. What kind of magical structure is the brain of Qin Xianqiu? End of this chapter. Chapter 6. Playing the Qin for Pet, Such a Familiar Plot. You are listening at Novel Full. Audio. Chapter 6 Playing the Qin for Pet, Such a Familiar Plot. Chen Kairan is warm and hospitable, and I see that she is a good person. Yu Wangshu didn't think Chen Kairan had any reason to harm her, and he even had to poison her in person in broad daylight. Moreover, her taste buds have not gone bad. In this era, there is no colorless and tasteless poison. There are few heavy mouthed dishes, so it's not easy to poison them. Qin Xian's attendant had a pitiful expression on his face, although Qin Kairan is not like a bad person, he must have a heart to guard against others. Yu Wangshu was speechless and choked for a moment, only to say, Thank you very much for the reminder from Qin Xianqiu. Qin Xian couldn't help but sigh, Sister, do you think I'm too suspicious? Yu Wangshu's black line. You also know how suspicious you are. Qin Xian, the attendant, whispered, If it's not me, I'm suspicious. Sister, why don't you think about it? The emperor got married at the age of 15, and it has been 10 years since then. However, there is only one son and one daughter under his command. How can we not think too much about it? I looked coldly at it, and besides you, there are not many simple things in this harem. Yu Wangshu showed a curious expression and said, How complicated is it? I'm quite curious, what exactly has been added to your brain in Guazi? Qin Xian, the attendant, showed a solemn expression and said, There is no rule in this dynasty that prohibits raising one's own flesh and blood even if one is of low rank. However, Qin Siren's second prince has been entrusted to the Empress Dowager for custody. As you can see, today the Empress is soliciting Chen Kairan in front of all the concubines, but Chen Kairan does not hesitate to politely refuse and even uses you as an excuse. With such patience, there must be a plan. Yu Wangshu. Qin Xianqiu continued, next is Empress Rome. On every five to ten day, all the concubines have to go to pay their respects to the Empress, but she is pregnant and dares to disrespect the palace like this. Sister, when she sees Empress Rome in the future, she must be respectful and careful. Yu Wangshu. Qin Xianqiu said again, This morning at the Funyi Palace, the Empress Dowager and Empress Xiang talked a lot about the Grand Princess. I saw that the Empress Dowager was very spoiled towards the Grand Princess, but Empress Xiang intentionally restrained her. This reminds me of a time when Empress Xiang once gave birth to a prince. It is said that this child passed away at the age of one. Yu Wangshu. The medical level in ancient times was backward, and having a young child was nothing but ordinary. 
Besides, Xiang Fei is still the emperor's cousin, and her blood relationship is so close. But she can't explain this to Qin Xianqiu. Qin Xianqiu is an ancient person hey, wait, is this Qin Xianqiu really an ancient person? A hint of doubt suddenly arose in Yu Wangxu's heart. Qin Xian's attendant was still chattering incessantly, as for Lan Gui, she gave birth to a daughter for the emperor when she was in the eastern palace, and the child died before reaching full moon. Since then, Lan Gui's temperament has cooled down, and it seems to me that she has a heart-wrenching look. Feng Jieyu seems to have a strong desire for favor, but it doesn't matter. Finally, it's us newly promoted concubines. As he spoke, Qin Xian lowered his voice and said, You have also seen it today. Lu Baolin is quite clever. Yu Wangshu. What? Why do I think Lu Baolin's brain is not working well? Qin Xianxu said thoughtfully, Today is the fifteenth day, and the emperor will most likely visit the Fengyi Palace. We are all dressed in gold and silver, gorgeous and vulgar, but Lu Baolin is as beautiful and flawless as a lotus in water. If the emperor sees him, he will definitely be unforgettable. Yu Wangshu. This sounds quite reasonable, but I always feel that the logic is a bit off. How did you know that the emperor would like lotus flowers after water, but unfortunately, the emperor would like gorgeous and dazzling beauties? Even if he couldn't guarantee it, he would still dislike Lu Baolin's dull appearance. Qin Xian, the attendant, smiled lightly and said, Unfortunately, Lu Baolin missed a move in chess. Not only did he not wait for the emperor, but he was also disliked by the empress. After this incident, it may be difficult for her to be favored. Yu Wangshu widened his eyes and said, Really? Wearing plain clothes to pay respects to the empress, is there any other benefit? Looking at Yu Shunu's surprised expression, Qin Xianqiu couldn't help but think to herself, she's really a simple little girl. Qin Xian, the attendant, said in a soft voice, since we have entered the palace, who doesn't want to be favored by the emperor? But unfortunately, we have been in the palace for half a month and haven't even seen the dragon face, which inevitably makes people anxious. Not to mention Lu Baolin, Chi Kainu, who lives with me in the same palace, has been practicing her piano skills hard these days. Playing the piano to win favor, what a familiar plot. Is that right? Yu Wangshu smiled, and seeing how hard we are competing for favor, I feel relieved. Moreover, the diligent appearance of Qin Xianqiu doesn't seem like a modern person at all. Perhaps she is just an ancient woman with serious suspicion and illness. Seeing that Lady Yu was still laughing heartlessly, Qin Xian felt a bit speechless. This Yu family. Foolishly, forming an alliance with her may not be a good choice. Oh, by the way, I'm going to pay my respects to Empress Dowager later, so I won't bother my sister. Yu Wangshu. After talking for a while, I was waiting for your ultimate goal. Why did you withdraw now? What kind of brain circuit is this Qin selected attendant? Yu Wangshu was as confused as Master Zhang'e, and could only watch Qin Xianqiu leave. Xiao Furong quickly walked into the inner room and said, Master, this Qin selected attendant. She insisted on holding back her left and right. After spending so much time alone with Master, she didn't know what to say. Yu Wangshu carefully considered Qin Xian's words and murmured, Is it possible that you want to form a clique with me? But it seems like you suddenly gave up at the last moment. Although I don't know why Qin Xianxue gave up, it's better than not giving up. This Qin Xian attendant is too talkative. Xiao Furong showed a strange expression and said, Gang up. This is the harem, not the court. Yu Wangshu said, Qin's idea of selecting attendants is somewhat different from that of ordinary people. As she spoke, she waved her hand and said, I see the weather is nice. Let's go out for a walk. After being nagged by Qin Xian, she didn't want to take a nap anymore. Well, mainly because it's already past noon. The harem of the Dian dynasty was divided into six palaces, east and west. There was a large imperial garden sandwiched between the east and west palaces, with mountains and water, 
and excellent scenery. Anil Palace is one of the six palaces in the east. After leaving the palace gate, one can walk for a quarter of an hour to see a small green glazed tile pavilion. The pavilion is called Chuanha, with a stream in front and a rockery behind. On both sides are lush flowers and trees, making it an excellent place for sightseeing and leisure. Unfortunately, there is already someone inside the pavilion. It was Chi Cave, who was said to be practicing her zither skills in Qin Xian's mouth, and there was a seven-string zither on the white marble stone table in the pavilion. Yu Wang Shu Although Qin Xian's brain circuit is peculiar, the information provided is not false. Seeing someone coming, and it was a lady named Yu who was one level higher than herself, Qi Kaina's face changed and she quickly stood up to salute. Hello Lady Yu, she said Yu Wang Shu nodded and gestured, Qi Kai is a good girl. She didn't mean to disturb others practicing the piano. Well, no, maybe they wanted to stay here and guard the tree. Maybe even the emperor. Thinking of this, Yu Wang Shu felt that he should not harm others and was about to say goodbye. Qi Kainu asked cautiously, how could a lady come to Chuanha Pavilion? Yu Wang Shu was speechless for a moment and said, the Luan Palace where I live is only a 15-minute walk away from here. Qi Kainu was stunned for a moment, her expression seemed a bit awkward, and the competition for favor had reached everyone's doorstep Yu Wang Shu quickly smiled at her and said, I don't know the rhythm, so I won't disturb Kainu. Thinking of her own goals, Chi Kainu did not persuade her to stay and watched Yu Shuna leave, only then breathed a sigh of relief. Yu Wang Shu only vaguely heard the sound of the Qin coming from behind as he walked away, which was clear and gentle, quite pleasant to listen to. End of this chapter Chapter 7 Lu Baolin, come on. You are listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 7 Lu Baolin, come on. At dusk, Yu Wang Shu returned to the Anil Palace and met Qing Shaoshi from the Anqing Pavilion with a smile. Sister Yu hasn't been seen all day, but it's easy to find her, he said Yu Wang Shu was taken aback and said, do you have anything to do with me? Zheng Shaoshi choked on this straightforward remark, his small face froze for a while before pouting and saying, can you come find my sister if you have nothing to do? Yu Wang Shu touched his nose and said, um. Yes, please come in. He invited Jing Shaoshi into the Changle Hall, and Yu Wang Shu drank a cup of goji berry tea. However, many things happened all day. He went to pay respects to the Empress early in the morning, delayed for half an hour at the Funyi Palace, and then was pulled by Chen Kairan to the Tsuihua Palace. He didn't come back until noon and didn't even sleep. Qin Xianchi came to the door and nagged, causing her to have no intention of taking a nap. Afternoon, he went out for a walk and met Qi Kainu at the Chuanha Pavilion Yu Wangshu said, I went for a walk and ended up meeting Qi Kainu. She plays the piano quite beautifully. Upon hearing these words, Zheng Xiaoshi couldn't help but chuckle lightly at the corner of his mouth, no matter how good the piano is, someone must listen to it. It seems that Zheng Xiaoshi also saw that Qi Kainu was waiting for the emperor to protect the plant. At this moment, Xiaox Xingzi loudly reported in the outer room, Master, the female historian of Fengyi Palace, Kaiyuan Girl, is here. The female historian is a palace official who mainly assists the empress in handling some document work, such as the empress's imperial edict, which is drafted by the female historian and can be considered as the empress's female secretary. Sometimes I also run errands for the queen. As for the rank, it's not high, only 8th grade. Please. Although she is only a female official, her representative is the queen. The female historian Kai Yuan, who is only 16 or 17 years old, is dressed in brocade and a flower crown, which is very bright and beautiful. She gracefully bows her knees and says, I have seen you Shunu and Jing Xiaoshi. Yu Wang Shu quickly raised a smiling face and said, Miss Kaiyuan, you don't need to be too polite. Kaiyuan held a huge mahogany food box in her hand, the empress asked me to send some dim sum to the lady. Yu Wang Shu was stunned for a moment, and introduced someone. 
Maybe Queen Fei also found out that she was embarrassed and said, Is this a gift for me, or are all the sisters in the harem? Ami Tofu, please don't just reward me. Kaiyuan replied, The Empress only rewarded the ladies and Chin Kairen. Yuan breathed a sigh of relief. Maybe after the banquet was over, the queen found that the dim sum on the table between her and Chin Kairen was almost eaten up, so she gave this reward. Thank you for the grace of Empress Dowager. Yu Wan Xu's smile was bright. Empress Meng is quite good, why do you have no time to think about her scheming? If the lady doesn't have any other instructions, I'll say goodbye, said Kai Yuan, blessing her body Yu Wang Shu hurriedly said, Xiaox Xingzi, give the colorful Mandarin girl a good gift. Yes, little master. After seeing off the colorful Mandarin, Yu Wang Shu hurriedly opened the food box, which was filled with crabapple cake and glutinous rice rolls. Unfortunately, the portion was not large, only four pieces of crabapple cake and six glutinous rice rolls. Yu Wang Shu looked at Xiao Shi Zheng and said, Xiao Shi, do you want to try it too? Actually, she was a bit reluctant. Jing Xiao Shi immediately waved his hand and said, I don't like sweets. That's a good relationship. Yu Wang Shu instructed Xia Furong to put it away and planned to slowly finish it after dinner. Looking at Yu Shunu's charming and greedy appearance, Jing Xiao Shi was speechless for a moment. She lowered her voice and said, We've been in the palace for half a month now. Do you know what sister's plan is? Plan. Of course, it's just a waste of time waiting for death and not working for free. Seeing Zheng Xiaoxi like this, he also intends to compete for favor. Great, five newcomers, for striving for excellence. Then I can fish with peace of mind. Yu Wang Shu smiled innocently and said, Plan. What else do I need to plan? The empress is virtuous, and the concubines are harmonious. I think this is great. The environment is excellent and suitable for laziness. Zheng Xiaoxi She knew that Yu Shunu was innocent, but she didn't expect her to be so foolish. After a few seconds of silence, Zheng Xiaoxi picked up his tea and silently took a sip, thinking to himself, Goji berry tea is so delicious. She stood up and said, it's getting late, I'm saying goodbye. Watching Zheng Xiaoxi leave, Yu Wang Shu touched his chin. Lu Baolin wanted the clear water lotus root, Qi Kainu wanted the Qin Yin waiting for the rabbit strategy, and Qin Xianxi and Zheng Xiaoxi didn't know what strategies to use to compete for favor. But let's just roll it up. I will silently cheer for you. In the next few days, Zheng Xiaoxi was nowhere to be seen all day, and Yu Wang Shu was too lazy to ask. Anyway, he must have wanted to compete for favor. Qi Kainu, on the other hand, has a lot of perseverance. For three consecutive days, she went to Chuanha Pavilion every day to play the piano, rain or shine, in order not to disturb Qi Kainu, Yu Wang Shu always takes a long detour when going out for a walk. Until the evening of that day, eunuch Xiaox Xingzi quickly ran into the Changle Hall and whispered, Master, the emperor has flipped through Lu Baolin's sign. Yu Wang Shu is focused on picking his teeth. Tonight, he had sauce elbow, which is fragrant and sticky, but it's a bit clogged. She tilted her head and thought for a moment, it's not Qi Kainu, nor is it Qin Xianxi or Zheng Xiaoxi, but Lu Baolin. Is this based on rank? Wait, isn't she the next one? Yu Wang Shu's eyes widened. At this moment, Yu Wang Shu had to quickly pray that Lu Baolin's clear water lotus strategy could achieve great success. Ami Tofu, Lu Baolin, come on, we must be hooked up by the emperor. At the beginning of the night, the emperor's sleeping palace, Qianan Hall, was already brightly lit. The eunuch in chief, Zhang Ji, was standing next to the coiled dragon pillar outside the hall. From a distance, he could see the red lawn sedan chair in the Jingxia room. He couldn't help but be overjoyed. Recently, the northwest was blessed with rain, and the drought was greatly alleviated. Finally, the holy emperor was willing to summon the lucky concubine. The one whose name was overturned this time is undoubtedly Lu Baolin, who holds the highest position among the newlyweds. 
Zhang Jizi has never seen these newcomers before, and he only hopes to be a young master like a flower, but he must not disappoint the emperor. But on second thought, she was chosen by both the Empress Dowager and the Empress Dowager, and her appearance must not be inferior. At this moment, the Red Luan sedan chair slowly landed, and Zhang Ji quickly stepped up to greet it, smiling like a groom welcoming the bride. Immediately, a snow-dot-white soft barbarian was called out from the sedan chair, and Zhang Ji couldn't help but sigh. Just by looking at this hand, he knew it was a fair-skinned woman. Then, the sedan curtain was lifted, and the Lu family of Baolin walked out of the sedan wearing a silver-red cloud satin cloak. On a spring night, it was extremely cold. The thick cloak lifted Lu's head and body, but her delicate face was particularly charming and charming against the backdrop of the silver-red cloak. Zhang Ji was overjoyed, his appearance seems to be secure. Congratulations to the young master of Baolin, among the newcomers, you are the first grace. The young master is so beautiful that the Holy One will surely like it. Zhang Ji smiled brightly. Lu Baolin shyly lowered his head and said, My father dot in dot law praised me. Please follow me into the palace, young master. Zhang Ji was already a bit impatient. End of this chapter. Chapter 8 Lu Baolin sent it. You are listening at Novel Full. Audio. Chapter 8 Lu Baolin sent it. Under the guidance of eunuch Zhang Ji, Lu Baolin walked into the Qianan Hall with a red face. In the palace, the glazed palace lamp hung high, and the fragrant toreya in the glass plate emitted a faint woody fragrance. The palace people were all silent, and a young handsome man wearing a bright red brocade round neck robe was sitting in front of a desk. In this palace, eunuchs are dressed in green, palace maids are dressed in green, and magnificent colors such as bright red and purple are naturally only enjoyed by noble people. Lu Baolin looked at the thin man in the big red robe and couldn't help but feel a slight surprise. Is this the emperor? Why do you dress like a groom's official thinking of this, Lu Baolin couldn't help blushing. She quickly bowed and said, My concubine Baolin, Lu Qian, wishes the emperor a long and peaceful life. Emperor Yan Zheng looked up and saw a woman wearing a bright cloak with a snow dot white and pretty face. He couldn't help but be satisfied by her three points, and his tone was also very gentle. Chiao Qian but what does Chiao Xiao Qian mean? Lu Chiao Qian smiled shyly and said, Exactly. Yan Jing couldn't help but smile. It suits you very well, he paused before saying, This hall is warm, let's take the cloak. Lu Baolin couldn't help but blush even more. Without saying a few words, he asked me to take off my clothes, yes, Lu Baolin looked at the emperor's handsome face and his voice couldn't help but soften by three points. The palace maid who was serving on the side had a pale face, but she had to use trembling hands to loosen Lu Baolin's cloak. Remove the bright cloak, but inside it is not bright and gorgeous clothing. Not only is there no bright red or purple, but instead a complete set of moon white and dark flower silk dresses. This month is white, extremely light blue, like moonlight, but at night, it looks like wearing a whole white outfit. And there are no other colors throughout. Yen Zheng's gaze changed from admiration to astonishment in an instant, and then anger arose from his heart. Lu Shi was dressed so ominously inside. That's all, her hair is still loose. That's right, Lu Baolin's hair is only tied up in a low bun, and there are no hairpin jewelry on the low bun. Don't just have this white magnolia flower with a bud on it. And half of the green silk hangs like a waterfall. Full of moonlight white and long hair scattered. On this big night, Emperor Yan Zheng almost suspected that he had seen a ghost. Isn't Lu suffering from hysteria? I called her to sleep, but she is so unlucky to me. Your Majesty. Lu Baolin, no matter how dull, also noticed that His Majesty's warm face had become very ugly, with a bewildered and innocent expression on her face. At the moment when eunuch Zhang Ji took off his cloak in Lu Baolin, his whole heart was cold. This Lu Baolin person is beautiful, why does he have a brain disease? 
At least she is the eldest lady of an official family. Where did she learn this tune from? Do you want to be filial all over? Who are you mourning for? Oh my goodness! Zhang Ji saw his emperor's son's expression was unpleasant, and immediately rebuked Lu Baolin's close attendant with a stern face. How do you serve him? How could you dress Lu Baolin in such clothes and comb his hair like this? The maid was so frightened that she trembled like a sieve. With a plop, she lay on the ground and said, Your Majesty, calm down. I have advised you, but you must dress up like this. Yen Zheng's face immediately became even worse. It wasn't the servants below who were causing trouble, but this Lu family really had hysteria. Zhang Ji, send someone to take Lu to the Yuning Palace and find an imperial physician to take a good look at her. First move out of the Dongxi Six Palaces, and then call the imperial physician to see if it can be cured. Yen Zheng ordered with a cold face. Lu Baolin looked bewildered and said, Yuning Palace. He had never heard of such a palace before Zhang Ji responded with a, yes, and then called out two big and round women to, invite, Lu Baolin, who had not yet regained consciousness. No wonder Lu Baolin has not heard of the Yuning Palace, after all, it has only been half a month since he entered the palace, and no one would mention such an unlucky place in front of the young masters. However, Lu is also an unlucky person, so going to an unlucky place is also appropriate. It was the emperor who was kind and even asked the imperial physician to show her. Zhang Ji felt that Lu Baolin's hysteria was probably incurable. Stay in the Yuning Palace honestly for the second half of your life. At this moment, Yu Wang Shu is enjoying the dim sum given to her by the queen, with medlar and chrysanthemum tea. It's not a very nourishing life. At this moment, eunuch Xiaox Xingzi rushed in in a panic, but lowered his voice and reported, Little Lord, something has happened. Lu Baolin has been sent to the Yuning Palace by the Imperial Eunuch. Yu Wang Shu was taken aback for a moment and said, Yuning Palace. Is Lu Baolin moving the palace? Speaking of which, this attendant is fast enough Xiao Xingzi stomped his feet and a strange expression appeared on his face. The Yuning Palace is far away from the six palaces of the east and west, and it is an extremely secluded place. Usually, only concubines who have made a big mistake will be sent to the Yuning Palace for confinement. Yu Wang Shu was stunned and said, Cold Palace. Sleeping Slot. Is this the Divine Horse Rhythm? Xiao Xingzi nodded and said, Exactly. Yu Wang Shu hurriedly asked, How could this be? What did Lu Baolin do wrong? How could he be sent to the Cold Palace? Xiao Xingzi shook his head and said, I heard he has developed hysteria. Hysteria. Madness. How could this be possible? Yu Wangshu's face was full of disbelief. He went to the Empress Palace a few days ago to pay his respects, but it was okay. How could he suddenly go crazy? Although she didn't want to believe it, Lu Baolin has indeed been sent to the Cold Palace now. Lu, whom she had high hopes for, surprisingly sent it quickly. Palace made Xiaofurong comforted and said, Don't think too much, young master. You should go to bed early. Tomorrow, you will also go to Fengyi Palace to pay your respects. Yes, tomorrow is March 20th, and it's also a day to pay respects. Let's inquire about what's going on then. Yu Wang Xu was a kind-hearted person who fell asleep shortly after lying down, but the other newly appointed concubines didn't sleep well. The next morning, the concubines of various palaces gathered at Fengyi Palace. This time, not only was Empress Rong absent, but also one Lu Baolin was missing. Empress Meng's face looked a bit haggard. She glanced at the people below who were kneeling to pay their respects and raised her hand to offer a complimentary seat. The head of the imperial concubines, Xiang Fei, couldn't help but speak up first. I heard that Lu Baolin had developed hysteria and was sent to the Yuning Palace by His Majesty. But I only saw Lu Baolin the day before yesterday, and he is clearly in good condition. Meng Empress stroked her forehead. Yesterday, the Emperor flipped through Lu Baolin's sign, and she fell asleep peacefully. 
Unexpectedly, after only half an hour, the emperor arrived. Meng Ho was shocked at that time, and naturally, even at this moment, it is still difficult to understand. Empress Meng made an effort to straighten her appearance and said with a straight face, Lu went to bed last night, wearing plain clothes and hair. With just one word, Xiang Fei, Lan Gui Pin, and Fang Jieyu were all shocked beyond measure, dressed in plain clothes and draped in hair. Is this a dormitory attendant? Is it clearly going to the grave? In contrast, a few newcomers are actually more calm. Qi Kainu was momentarily stunned. Qin Xianxi and Zheng Xiaoxi looked at each other in silence. And the first thing that came to Yu Wangxu's mind was those modern immortal and chivalrous dramas. I never expected that Lu Baolin could even set such a tone. Wait, is this the brain circuit that ancient people should have? Yu Wangxu couldn't help but suspect again that Lu Baolin shouldn't have been worn, right? However, she has no evidence. Is it possible that he is really an ancient person with a sick brain? It took Xiang Fei a long time to come to her senses. She stroked her chest and gasped for breath, Oh my goodness, when I came back to greet you, she dressed exceptionally plain. Did she have some hysteria at that time? End of this chapter Chapter 9 Guarding Zhuzhou and waiting for Emperor's success, adding Gung. You are listening at Novel Full. Audio. Chapter 9 Guarding Zhuzhou and waiting for Emperor's success, adding Gung, thinking about five days ago, Empress Meng became a bit angry. The Japanese palace had already warned her, but unfortunately, she not only didn't take it to heart, but also intensified it. Fang Jieyu and Du quickly comforted, Empress Dowager, calm down. Lu's hysteria may not have lasted for a day or two. How could a few words awaken her? Meng Ho rubbed her sore eyebrows and said, the emperor is kind and even asked the imperial physician to treat her. It's just this kind of lesion. As she shook her head, it was obvious that she no longer had any hope. As she spoke, Empress Meng glanced at the concubines present and said, this matter came suddenly, and it was also the poor fortune of the Lu family. Empress Meng's gaze focused on the four of them, Yu Shunu, Qi Baolin, Qin Xianxi, and Jing Xiaoxi. She thought to herself, fortunately, these four have always been well dressed, so she probably wouldn't have made such crazy moves as the Lu family. Meng Ho remained serious and said, you should also take it as a warning and not learn from the Lu family. As soon as these words were spoken, the concubines stood up one after another, bending their knees and responding in unison with a, yes. Let's leave today, you shouldn't stay. Although Empress Meng was tired, she still named Yu Wang Shu to stay in the hall. Yu Wang Shu. The concubines retreated in twos and threes, while Yu Wang Shu was alone in his hair. He had to tremble and ask, I wonder if the Empress has any warning. Meng Ho looked up and down at the Yu lady and said, You used to play cards with Lu Shi. It seemed that a while ago, they often went to the Qin Kai Ren Palace together. Yu Wang Shu hurriedly said, My concubine is not familiar with Lu Baolin. She is really not familiar. After a moment of silence, Empress Meng knew each other only after entering the palace, so she probably wouldn't have been infected with hysteria. Empress Meng sighed and said, Next, if the emperor calls you to serve in bed, you should follow the rules and not be unconventional. She finally understood that the queen had left her for Mao. Because the emperor really flipped the brand according to their rank. Isn't she the one under Lu Baolin? I convex. She really doesn't want to sleep, emperor. But, the emperor should be quite angry with Lu Baolin, right? This guy is in a fit of anger, he can't help but get angry. What kind of feigning illness, once exposed? She doesn't want to go to the Yuning Palace to accompany Lu Chiaoqian for a cold meal. My concubine, please remember the teachings of the Empress. Yu Wangshu lamented in his heart, Qi Kainu, hurry up and push me to the Emperor. If you don't push the Emperor again, the Emperor will push me. Help. At this moment, sitting on the Longyu, 
Yan Zheng, the lean and handsome emperor of the early dynasty, felt his nose tickle again and once again. Azu. Sneezing makes a loud sound. Yu Wang, who had been earnestly taught by the empress about the rules of bedtime, returned to the Changle Hall of the Luan Palace with ease and exhaustion. Is the good day of eating and waiting for death to pay for nothing coming to an end so soon? Palace maid Xia Furong lowered her voice and said, Little Lord, the Zheng Shaoshi from the Western Palace has not returned yet. Yu Wang Shu said speechlessly, What are you staring at someone for? Very impolite. Xiao Furong. Zheng Shaoshi has been sneaking around lately, and I am also worried. Yu Wang Shu pursed his lips and said, There's nothing to worry about. Isn't she just forming an alliance with Qin Shanshi? What a big deal. Xiao Furong widened her eyes and said, How did you know? Yu Wang Shu said indifferently, Today at Feng Yi Palace, they were staring at each other with big and small eyes, clearly having. Cough cough. There's something fishy. Ah bah, clearly having an affair. Xiao Furong nodded and said, It's still important for you to be careful, Lord. However, what are Qin Xianxi and Zheng Shaoxi planning to do? Yu Wang Shu casually said, It's just a matter of working together to win favor. It's not a big deal. Let's hurry up. There's also Qi Kainu, if you don't work hard, my mother will be sleeping. Lu Baolin has already sent it completely, and she can only rely on these three to be more energetic. Xiao Furong couldn't help feeling anxious and said, Why don't you consider teaming up with Qi Kainu? Yu Wang Shu's black line has crossed, ghosts have to consider Qi Jiyue. She coughed and said solemnly, Lu has just become hysterical. The emperor and empress are angry. At this time, it's best to be calm and composed. Who is jumping around? Sooner or later, they have to go to the Yuning Palace to accompany Lu. Xiao Furong was so frightened by these words that she trembled all over. She quickly slapped herself in the face and said, It was my servant who acted recklessly. Oh, what are you doing? Yu Wang Shu was startled and quickly took little Furong's little hand, coldly greeting her face. Although she has traveled through these days and enjoyed the service of palace maids and eunuchs with peace of mind, at most she regards them as high dot quality domestic maids. But in the hearts of Xia Furong and her companions, they are all inferior servants. As servants, it is not appropriate to point fingers at the master. Moreover, she almost led the master astray. Of course, it should be fought. Xiao Zhu. Xiao Furong's face was full of surprise, and she was also somewhat flattered. Yu Wang Shu sighed. In the feudal era, at the same time, she couldn't help but feel grateful that she had at least crossed the line and become a ruling class. Although the young master was small, at least he was a master. If she were to become a servant, she would really rather die from a head dot on collision. These days, Eli stretched out her hand and opened her mouth to eat, and she even felt a little relieved. She is such a woman who is greedy for pleasure and comfort. She has little ambition or ambition, only wanting to live comfortably, healthily, and even fantasizing about getting something for nothing in this era. She is neither intelligent nor noble, she is just an ordinary and vulgar woman. Sigh, let it be natural. She has been eating well these days, and the little palace maid and eunuch around her have also been taken care of in a more peaceful way. The master and servant are in harmony, and life is just comfortable. Is this kind of good day coming to an end? Yu Wang Shu is as quiet as a chicken on this side, and the other few are not planning to let nature take its course. Lu Baolin was sent to the cold palace, and Qi Kainu, Qin Xianxi, and Zheng Xiaoxi not only did not receive any warning, but also secretly rejoiced in their hearts. Because they lacked a competitor, it was naturally a great thing worth celebrating. Fortunately, the emperor did not flip the signboard that night. Perhaps Lu Baolin had given this young emperor too much impact, and he needed time to slow down. This night was a stormy night, but the next day I woke up on a sunny day. Yu Wang Shu looked at his bright and beautiful face in the mirror and couldn't help but marvel at how pleasing it was. 
Let's go out for a walk, he said Yu Wang Shu originally wanted to go out and enjoy the scenery of Dian Lake after the rain, but unexpectedly, he saw a special scenery. The elegant and unique Chuanha Pavilion in the distance. However, this meeting was unusually lively, with a group of eunuchs and palace maids waiting outside the pavilion, while there were only two people in the pavilion. One was Chi Kai, the other. Yu Wang Shu could only see a man wearing an apricot yellow robe. This battle, this scene, even with your toes, you can guess who this person is. Yu Wang Shu smacked his lips, really letting Chi Kainu wait for the rabbit to stay. At the end of the month, we need to add a change and request a ticket, end of this chapter. Chapter 10 Picking the Daughter Chi Jiyue You are listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 10 Picking the Daughter Chi Jiyue Due to the distance, it was difficult to see clearly how many noses and eyes the people in the pavilion had grown. However, this emperor of Dian dynasty was at least not the common chubby smashing of Ming dynasty emperors. Well, that's good news, isn't it? The better news is that the atmosphere in Chunha Pavilion seems quite good. Chi Kainu was wearing a particularly bright plum red jacket and a pale green skirt, with red paired with green. From a distance, she looked like a flower, not to mention I dot catching. With the beauty of a Chitsai woman, she can completely handle red and green. And this emperor seems to like his concubines to dress up beautifully. I don't know what the people in the pavilion said, but she saw Chi Kainu sitting face to face with the emperor from a distance, and then faintly heard the melodious sound of the Qin. Yu Wang Shu smiled heartily, as it seemed that Qi's strategy of competing for favor on the Qin had also been successful. She can have a peaceful sleep tonight. Emperor Yan Zhang's mood was originally not very good. Today, after the morning court, he had planned to visit the Empress Dowager, but on the way, he heard a relatively pleasant sound of the Qin. So Yan Zheng changed his itinerary and followed the sound of the Qin to this quite elegant pavilion. The woman playing the Qin in the pavilion was not dressed elegantly, but instead had a head full of gold and jade, and her clothes were bright and attractive. This normal attire made Yan Zheng couldn't help but relax his brows. Although it is obvious that this is a scene of vying for favor, What's the point of the concubine making a little fuss to invite favor? What matters is that this person is beautiful and has a normal brain. If it weren't for Lu Baolin's mischief, such a small trick might have been completely ignored by Yan Zheng. But now, his expectations for his concubines have been lowered a lot, just have someone with a normal temperament and a charming appearance. I have sacrificed myself to shame, Chi Kainu said shyly. Although Yan Zheng also felt that the sound of the Qin was a bit embarrassing, he thought that Qi Shi was only 16 or 17 years old, and his Qin skills could not be on par with the masters of the teaching workshop. It's not bad, he said Yan Zheng's ears had already been raised, and the skill of Qi Kainu could only be considered barely in his ears. Yan Zheng looked at Qi's face, pale and delicate. He nodded and asked, What are your maiden names? Emperor Yan Jing only remembered, as if it was called Qi Moyue Qi Kaina whispered, My name is Ji Yu. Yan Jing smiled and said, The light, the wind, and the moon. Exactly. Yan Jing nodded and took Qi Shi's hand, saying, A good name makes a good person. Qi Kainu blushed with a swish. Emperor Yan Jing thought to himself, This is pleasing to the eye, she's the only one tonight. However, the Empress highly admires Yu Shi, saying that she has outstanding looks and is innocent and charming. Perhaps at a young age, let's put it aside for a moment. I don't like women who are too young. The Qi family looked older and asked, How old is the Qin now? In this dynasty's talent show, the candidates were women who were already in their hair and were waiting for their names, ranging from 15 to 18. Qi Kainu whispered, my concubine is already 18 years old. Yan Zheng nodded in satisfaction and said, Very good. Yu Wang Shu didn't keep looking, after all, it was so far away that she couldn't see anything, and there was also a possibility of being caught. She watched the atmosphere in the pavilion was good, so she quickly withdrew. 
As expected, in the afternoon, Xiaox Xingzi ran over and reported, Master, the Jingshu room has taken Qi Kainu to Yanqing Palace. Yu Wang Xu was eating dried apricots, with a look of happiness on her face. However, upon hearing this news, she couldn't help but be surprised. She let out a moan in her heart, it wasn't dark yet. This emperor, so anxious. But on second thought, I think we should go play the piano first, talk about the situation, and then leave at night. She nodded and said, I understand. Rest assured. At this moment, a burst of laughter came from outside the hall, you're quite calm and composed. Yu Wang Xu looked up and saw that it was Chen Kairen, who was addicted to playing cards all day long. She quickly stood up and saluted, the talented person is coming with great hospitality. It was my mistake to welcome him. Chen Kairen sneered and said, All right, you've become even more polite. Yu Wang Xu smiled shyly and quickly ordered someone to serve goji berry tea. Chen Kairen, however, was not in a hurry to drink. Instead, he looked up and down at Yu Wang Xu and said, You can calm down. You know, in order, it should be you tonight. Yu Wang Xu smiled and said, A talented person is joking. There is nothing that should or should not be done. Isn't it all up to the emperor to make decisions? Chen Kairen also smiled and said, I underestimated your temperament. She thought she was the impatient master, but the emperor started flipping the signs, so she wasn't in a hurry anymore. However, it's also true. What's so urgent about this kind of thing? It could happen sooner or later, Chen Kairen thought to himself. The first favor must also be the first jealousy. This sentence, it's always my turn, made Yu Wang Shu slightly depressed. But on second thought, since Qi Kaina's plan to compete for the favor of Qin Yin has been successful, it must be able to hold the emperor back for some time. Later, there will also be Qin Xianxi and Jing Xiaoxi rubbing their hands. When the three of them compete, the emperor probably will forget about her. Yu Wang stretched his face and smiled, if talented people don't drink it anymore, goji berry tea will be cold. Chen Kairen smiled and picked up the tea cup. Our emperor, he has a cold mind. If it weren't for the sake of his offspring, he would have loved to devote himself to the previous court all day long. Yu Wang Shu whispered, isn't there already a second prince? Chen Kairen took a leisurely sip of tea and said, in an ordinary family, a son is not enough, let alone the royal family. The emperor wanted to give birth to more younger brothers for the second prince, that is, to have more competitors in the future. Chen Kairen, who is a mother, is quite calm. However, Chen Kairen came from a humble background and was not favored. He didn't even have his son under his knee, so why bother with that effort? Yu Wang Shu thought to himself that Chen Kairen is also a passive worker. However, Chen Kairen didn't seem to want to mention the second prince much, but smiled and said, The taste of goji berry tea is good, and this apricot fruit is also very appetizing to eat. Yu Wang Shu quickly pushed the high footed plate containing preserved fruits towards Chen Kairen and said, Then you can eat a few more pieces. Just eating, drinking, chatting and chatting with Chen Kairen like this. Gradually, it was getting dark, but Chen Kairen still moved his buttocks. Yu Wang Shu. What does this mean? Talent, it's getting late. I was already hungry, Yu Wang Shu muttered. Chen Kairen smiled and said, Isn't Lady Yu keeping me for dinner? Yu Wang Shu sweated profusely and said, If talented people don't mind my humble and simple meals here. Chen Kairen seemed to be a master who didn't know what politeness meant. She immediately took on the conversation and said, I'm not picky. Well. Okay. Yu Wang Shu quickly frowned and gestured to little Furong. Yes, I'll go now. She didn't ask Xiao Furong to rush dinner, but instead asked her to go to the small kitchen with money to take care of it. She can't really ask Chen Kairen to eat those two or three dishes with her. If there are guests, we must add a hard dish, right? But the small kitchen won't add food to you for no reason, it will cost extra. 
Xiao Furong was still very clever and observant. After about two quarters of an hour, Xiao Furong and Xiao Xingzi led a food box and quickly arranged their meals. Today's dinner was very sumptuous, with minced meat and eggplant, shredded chicken and white fungus, steamed sea base, and gold and silver duck soup. Look, there are chicken and duck, fish and meat, meat and vegetables, paired with fragrant japonica rice, it's really appetizing. End of this chapter